attainment. All right? Okay, thank you. But that is not visible on the physical body. It is actually seen by the wisdom eye from the disciples. So they draw it down from their own seeing. It's not from ordinary people seeing like that. Yeah? So when you see a living Buddha, if it happened to be uh, there is a, another living Buddha like Sakamuni come in front of you, you might not <laughs> tell him to open it for you and have a look. He might not have it. <laughs> you have to use a different eye to see. Okay, thanks. I uh, work in a hospital, and sometimes I work with children who are very sick. And I was wondering, how should we understand why it is that some small children who have no choice and who can make no mistakes have to suffer so much? I understand your heart, yes. I used to wonder like that also. I used to say, well, if we are adult, we may make some mistake or can take the retribution for it. But the children, they're so innocent. Well, I used to think like that, but now I know there are reincarnation. There is the law of reincarnation. What you sow, so shall you reap. You reap not enough in this life, you reap the next life. You reap the minute you are born. Otherwise, how can we explain God's mercy, which is so differentiated? Some are born with disease, some are born have some trouble, some are born blind, some are born deaf, etc. God is ever merciful, just that we reap what we sow. Hmm? Otherwise, we cannot explain. Huh? Now, it is difficult to believe this, but it isn't difficult. If we meditate, uh, in some kind of uh, transcendental way, we may go to a higher plane of consciousness and we see through the past lives of a person and we know why it so happened. Then we are satisfied or justified. Right? Are you a doctor? Yeah. Yes. Yes? Uh, for children? Specialist in children? Yeah? <laughs> I'm happy to know that you work from your heart. Yes. Anyhow, Every time you work, try not to feel personally involved, otherwise you will be drained out of energy. Just do your best and leave everything to God. It's God who kills or who severe. It's not our hands to help. Actually, He only used our hand to help who He wants to help, who deserves the help. Yeah? The others has to go through some kind of lessons, some kind of cleansing process through suffering in order to be greater in the next life, because we are continually <laughs> in eternity. We are not born only once, otherwise it's too depressing. Too depressing, huh? One hundred lives, what a waste of creative energy on God's part. No, He creates and we live all the time. What we do mistakenly this life, we make up in the next. Yeah? What we cannot pay this life, we pay in the next. Just like you take a mortgage. Hmm? You've introduced two terms today, and um, I do not know them too well. And those two terms are Buddha nature yes. and Samadhi. Oh, yes. First, the Buddha nature. Ah. Does a squirrel have a Buddha nature? And does this mic have a Buddha nature? They all have. Does everything Buddha. have Buddha yes. nature? Yes. Everything that That's that. what we call in Hinduism the term that God is omnipresent. God is in all creation. Similar that way. And what is Buddha nature? This is what we call God nature. Or God. Omnipresent God. What is God? I don't understand. You do not know God? Well, then come for initiation. I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you what God is. <laughs> Um, because God is not to be explained in our everyday language. It can be known, can be experienced, can be realized, <laughs> but it's difficult to express in human language what God is. Just a very mighty power, very loving, very compassionate, beyond our comprehension. I see. Okay. And the second... Second is Samadhi. You said that 
Samadhi was a consciousness above so that you only see happiness and, and serenity without looking at miserableness and suffering and so on. Yeah. What I don't understand is how can you have happiness and bliss if you don't have suffering? Well, we suffer enough, don't we? Hmm? We suffer enough already. When we're in Samadhi, even you want to suffer then? <laughs> you even want to suffer in Samadhi and that is too much. <laughs> can, can you explain the term Samadhi again? Samadhi means you are in deep peace, peace and serenity and a higher kind of consciousness where you know things different from what you know now, where you know the truth and you realize that things aren't what we think they are in everyday life, right? But uh, suffering in Samadhi, that is difficult to attain. <laughs> I'm sorry, in Samadhi there isn't any suffering. That is why it is called Samadhi. Otherwise, it would term suffering, yeah? <laughs> now, suffering we have when we aren't in Samadhi, when we in ordinary sense. But when we are in Samadhi, we realize that there isn't any suffering at all, just only hallucination, imagination, dream, playwright, play stage, nothing more than bubbles in the sea. <laughs> um, sometimes, is there not happiness in suffering? Sometimes. For instance, uh, let's say you are going through a hard time. Yeah. But you learn a lot from it, and from that you have happiness through suffering. From the hard time you learn right. and you become happy, you gain happiness. Right. That's all right, that's the purpose of suffering, so that you learn to grow up. So I don't understand the differentiation between suffering and happiness in samadhi. Well, I have told you already, it's all lessons, all learning, all dream. But then, when you go through struggle in order to gain a little bit of happiness later, that is too ephemeral even. Just a small part of the wisdom, if you learn the whole thing. And you know even that happiness and that sorrow are both hallucination, <laughs> maya, false. Yeah? You gain a super sense of happiness, transcendental, higher than that ordinary happiness that you learn from struggling. Yeah? Well, it's hard to explain when you're not yet in Samadhi. <laughs> well, I invite you to come and join with the Samadhi order. <laughs> so one day you will know everything, and no need I have to use the limited and poor human language to explain.